Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of The Motto, except this time, for the first time, we're on location. Welcome to sunny Ibiza. Today, we're gonna to be chatting to the king of San Antonio Bay, the walking Instagram story, Mr. Ocean Beach himself. I'm, of course, talking about Wayne Lineker. Now, it should be really good to have a good chat with Wayne. I've known him for about 10 years, never really had an in-depth conversation with him, so it'll be good to sit down, chill out, and find out what he's all about. So, subscribe, give our video a like, let's do this. From like May to like September, you're just on my timeline. Constantly. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit strange, really. But um, I mean, I enjoy it. You know, people ask me for a selfie and stuff, and uh, yeah, I mean, but the the Ibiza itself is uh, it's really come on again the last last two to three years, and um, and the, the whole culture's changing really from you know the bars and nightclubs, and it's now becoming very popular the daytime yeah. daytime parties and stuff like that not just at ocean you know other other venues as well so it has uh, it has changed so the bar culture is struggling a little bit it's not like it used to be where yeah. everyone used to meet in the bars and then go out to the clubs it's all changed now everyone's just getting getting in, yeah. in, a, in a bit of a state in the daytime and they're not really in the mood to go to the bars <laughs> yeah, so much true. anymore you know it's and so then they'll great. have a little sleep and then they'll still go to the clubs but not till later yeah but not till later yeah. you know so yeah. I remember the first time I stayed in Ibiza, um, I stayed in San Antonio Bay in a hotel, like literally just two minutes from here, the Neptuno. Um, and this wasn't here then, this was like about 2007. And yeah. this has just like revitalized and changed the landscape of San Antonio Bay, hasn't it? It has, yeah. I mean, the funny thing is when we, when, when myself and Tony Truman, my partner, found the venue, and we, um, we've always had this idea to do this. and. Um, and the general talk around town was the boys are wasting the time. What do you think they're doing? You can't bring a venue like that to San Antonio, it will never work, you know. Um, we obviously disagreed with that and uh, we've been proved to be made right. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it has become the central focal point of, of San Antonio now, which is for us, it's great. Now, when we, um, myself and James, decided to do the motto and uh, we had like a a wish list of people that we wanted to get on yeah. and you were like top of that list no top of the list bro honestly yeah, that's crazy. just because like you know you're loved by many um loads of people follow you but then we were like how many do we what do we know about wayne lineker yeah. what do we actually know we thought people to be really interested just okay, to find cool. out just to find that's, out about you i'm honored i'm honored to, to, <laughs> to, for that to be the case yeah but first things first you probably know that the thing we like to do on the motto is, is to give back whether that's not only through like the stories that our guests give us mm -hmm. amazing stories but also the money that we get from sponsors, yeah. we donate that money uh, on That's the cool. behalf of our guests to a charity of your choice. So that being said, what charity would you like us to donate the money to on your behalf? Well, this is great. Um, thank you very much. Um, um, my chosen charity is the one that I'm an ambassador for, which is uh, Dom's Food Mission. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, the guy, Dom Warren, contacted me um, and I, I just read up about the, the whole feeding the homeless and, and the underprivileged children and... Um, Great cause. It is, yeah, because, I mean, people people see the homeless as these, you know, low and down outs, you know, yeah. it's not like that, you know, I mean, they're, they're, everyone has certain chances in life and some some succeed, some don't, you Absolutely. know, for whatever reason, there's many reasons that these, these unfortunate, less fortunate people are in these positions. Yeah. Um, and it's as... And I, I've witnessed it firsthand. I went to Brighton, um, um, sorry, Hastings, to uh, to give food out to the homeless. And you know, they're really nice people. You know, it's yeah. like you know, and they're really appreciative. And then we did an Easter egg thing with the children at, at Easter, and Brilliant. it's a really nice thing to be involved in. So yes, I'd like my donation to go to Lovely. Dom's Food Mission. Awesome, great cause, great cause. All right, so let's let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. Like. Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Like, what were you like as a, as a youngster? Where were you born? I was born in Leicester in uh, 1962, many years ago. Nice. 55, actually. But, um, You're 55? 55, yeah, 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 I'm 55. <laughs> I hang around with young people, so, you know, I, I don't tend to age so much, but um, I think it, maybe the vodka's helped over the years as well. But, um, yeah, I'm from Leicester. I was, I was born in Leicester, born and raised in Leicester. Yeah. 
What was it like growing up in Leicester like, as a kid? It was, I guess, like most cities really. I mean, you, you, I was just hanging around around the church entrances and stuff like that with the boys and, you know, doing what, doing what teenagers did when I grew up. And uh, I used to go roller skating all the time. That yeah, the thing? Also, that was yeah, the thing yeah. Well, there's no iPads or nothing like that then. So we, you played football, cricket, or went roller skating. Right. Uh, I did all three. So, but yeah, and then obviously, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then I when I left school, I, I I had ten years on the markets, fruit and veg, um, which has been a family business. My yeah. dad's, my, my great granddad, my granddad, my dad, and then I took it over, and then. I worked fruit and veg, getting up at silly hours, four o'clock in the morning, working wow. 16 hours a day, Is that hard? six days a week, very hard. But it was great fun, and I and I believe um, it's the best education I could have ever wished for. You know, yeah. um, I learnt a lot more on the market than I did at school for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I heard that you were quite a good sportsman when you were younger. Yeah, I mean, it was actually me that everyone thought was going to be the, yeah, the footballer that. of the family. Yeah. You know. And uh, I think the Gary wrote a quote in one of his books. He said, uh, "My brother has more skill in his little toe than I do my whole body." Uh, <laughs> the thing is, with Gary, he had this phenomenal pace, and I, and I was the other end of the scale. I was like the tortoise. So that's what why. position did you play? Because obviously, so Gary was a striker. I was a striker, striker too. Up front. Up, yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, more left wing striker, but uh, yeah, I was. Uh, but I, it just wasn't for me. I went home to my dad one day and said, "Dad, you know." I just wanted to be out with my mates because that's that's me. That's my inner self yeah. coming out. You know, I didn't I didn't want to do the training. I didn't want to do. So I was at I was at Leicester after school every day uh, when I was fourteen, or well, three days a week. Football club. Oh, yeah, Leicester, yeah, I was at Leicester boy. Uh, Leicester, we went to the football club to train, and I just didn't want to do it. I just wanted to be with my mates and um, and go out and you know. And uh, I just said to my dad one day, I said, I just don't want to play anymore, Dad. I just, I'm just not interested. And he, I've never seen my dad cry in his life he's until that day. Proper upset. Yeah, he was really upset. You know, he didn't really understand it. And uh, I never kicked a ball again until I was 21. And then I went into, I, I started to play again. Started playing semi-pro. That was all yeah. for, for Hinkley Athletic and Nuneaton and Borough. And, right. But yeah, still a good level. Still yeah, it was a good level. level. Yeah. yeah, but I, it's like everything, isn't it? In sport, you have to be able. To, everything you have to have the skill the talent the dedication yeah. the commitment yeah. i had the skill and the talent but that was it <laughs> <laughs> so like you you made a conscious decision that you wanted to like go into the family business at, yeah. at that point yeah. Yeah. so you, you're working on like you know working on the working on the in the fruit and veg business um yeah. was that the first time you thought about like you know getting into like entrepreneurialism and it just kind of happened really it's because um at 14 i had my own stall on the market at 14 yeah. you know the weekends my dad gave me a corner of um of corner of stall um of which i used to buy my own fruit and veg for it and sell them and set out yeah. so by the time i was 15 i'd, I'd like quite and I, I left school at 15 but i immediately had my own little business on there and, yeah. and by the time i was 16 17 i was you know I've got about 20 people working for me and Are you serious? Yeah, yeah at that age yeah so let's go back a few years um Lineker's bars yeah. How did Lineker's, because that was one of my first experiences of, of you, like Lineker's Bars. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? How did you have the idea for it? Like, what was the inspiration for it? Lineker's was, uh, so when I worked on the markets, fruit and veg, it was dipping badly because all the big supermarkets started opening at that point. Right. Yeah. It was, they, people used to take their cars, load their, you know, get a one-stop shop. Whereas yeah. people used to travel to town to buy the fruit and veg, yeah. didn't have to do that anymore. Yeah. So it was dying to death very fast. The market trading in general, not just uh, fruit and veg. Yeah. So I thought I, I need I need to get out of this now. It's not it's going it's going that way as opposed yeah. to that way. Because um, it used to be a very very strong business. And um, and I thought I, I got my my brother was like getting super famous at that time. What's you know, all, what's all time? Eight. Uh, late 80s, yeah, yeah, 87, 88, which is when Gary was really becoming the superstar that he has become now. Yeah, you know, he started, yes, yeah, he got the hatch, yeah. he got a golden boot in 86, yeah. and yeah. so it was that. After he then he signed for Barcelona, he had that great year at Everton. He signed for Barcelona, and I thought I need to use my second name here somehow. Yeah. You know, why not? I'm in a position, I'll take advantage of it. Yeah. And I thought, I've always wanted to open a bar in, in Tenerife because at that time my, my two boys' mum, um, Dwayne and Sean's mum, lived, grandparents lived in Tenerife. 
and we used to visit them quite a lot and I used to love it there and um, I went and I said to myself I'm, I'm gonna open a bar I'm gonna open a bar I'm, I'm gonna call it Lineker's and um, and it's weird because I, I walked through the market one day from breakfast just before I was about to a few weeks before I was about to leave to, to go and find my business and uh, I could take to the very spot, the very tile I stood on. And I had this vision, I had this vision in my head, it just, it just flashed before me. I saw this bar with these big round windows and I, and I could see inside the bar all the pictures on the wall and I could see people in there and I could see, I could see everything. It was the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. And um, I don't know, it was probably two months later, I actually, we moved there and I was looking for a location. I got a phone call, this from a uh, estate agent, can you come have a look at this bar I found you? I walked in, it's got, it's got three big round windows wow. in it. It's got all the walls I saw in the vision. It's got the front doors that I saw. It was like, it was the weirdest thing ever. I just went, I want it. <laughs> and I want it, and, and we opened, and it was an instant success. It was like, it was, it was too small, so. So the business was so good, like. It yeah, it immediately, it immediately kicked off, you know, and, um, and uh, it was like, this is mad, you know. This is in the days when there's no Sky Sports and nothing. Yeah. You know, we used to channel, I used to have my mate, I used to phone from the bar phone with a little microphone on it to, to the, my friend's house where you used to put the mic on the TV at home. It's true, mate, and, and like nobody else was doing it. So I was having live commentary through like cup finals and the semi-finals and, yeah. and, um, and everyone's like just powering in the bars just to listen to People it. And, loved it, didn't they? Yeah, it was great, it. you know, and then, and then obviously we, we had our own way of having a party and then because you know people dancing on the chairs and the tables and so that, anyway we moved we moved to a bigger venue which is still there now 30 years on it's still it's not as busy as it used to be but it's uh, it's still it's still there doing success uh, doing well but yeah I mean when when I first opened in because uh, it, it was at that stage where the doorman was starting to get aggressive and right. you can't do this you can't do that right. I said that I thought comes, so, it yeah like, you know, and I thought exactly. to myself, why not? Why, why, if they want to stand on the tables and chairs, let them stand on them. Yeah. You know, so I, I kind of turned that around and let everyone do exactly what they wanted, you know, within reason. So, you know, people were just jump, first time jumping on the tables and the chairs and cutting on the bar top and dancing and doing shows. Because you've got Linnickers here. Yeah. And yeah. the first time I ever went there, it was exactly the same. I, was, yeah. I, was, I think I was in there with like, loads of people. And like you say, everyone's on the chairs, yeah. everyone's on the bar, yeah. Yeah, drinking. So you want a good time, have a good time, yeah. you know. You, you, you bring these people into your venue to in, introduce them to alcohol, they're gonna, they're gonna do silly things, aren't they? Don't tell them off. Don't feed them alcohol all night, take their money and then tell them off. Yeah. You know, just let them have a good time. Obviously, if people get aggressive, that's different. That's but, different, yeah. yeah. You know, if people are just stumbling about having fun, let them stumble, Yeah. Yeah. you know. So in the early days, like you mentioned your, your, your two sons, um, obviously you've got kids, yeah. you've probably got to be one of the coolest dads ever. Oh, thank you. I don't know. I'm a dad myself. My children won't say that. <laughs> They'll probably say I'm the most uncool dad ever, but yeah. But in the earlier days, how did you manage to, to balance like, you know, work life and your, you know, your home life as well? Was it hard? Was it easy? Um, yeah. I mean, sometimes I find it quite difficult. Yeah. Well, when, when I first opened in, because um, I actually won custody of my children yeah. at a very similar time. So it was hard to balance it, but, um, but they used to, you know, um, they used to come over all the time before before I took custody of them for like a few years. They used to come over the summer holidays, and but I mean you manage, don't you? I mean you juggle around. And at that age, I didn't know sleep. I didn't need sleep or nothing like that. You know, it's just a, I used, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then and then a few years later, then I took um, I, I got custody of my children, so I moved back to the UK as much as I could, and then tried to juggle around and flying back and this. Yeah, I mean, you just do, you know, you got, when you've got children, that's what you do, so. Yeah, absolutely. Now, every time I see you, Wayne, you're just the most, you're always upbeat, you're always happy. I've yeah. seen you at festivals, yeah. I've seen you like here, like out and about and stuff. You're always really happy. How do you, how do you, do you ever get like moments when you're just feeling a little bit down or how do you get through, how do you get through the downtime, the downtimes? Um, you yeah. Never, you never seem like you're down. No, well, when I'm down, I'm probably just a bit hungover watching TV <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm a lively, bubbly kind of character, I suppose. And um, you know, the, the problem the problem that I have is 
trying to hold my energy back, you know, especially if I have a drink and stuff like that, then I'm a, I'm a little bit too lively, you know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I love my life and I'm very fortunate and, you know, I, I just love people. I love being around people. What's it like, we saw him earlier, what's it like working with Dwayne, your son? He's a good boy. Like, yeah. my first time in Ibiza, he made my, I went to Lineker's loads, like, and he was there, he was behind the bar. He's, yeah. he's a lovely guy. Um, what's it like working with him? Because he's like a big part of Ocean Beach, isn't he? Well, Dwayne is, um, Dwayne is the father of this relationship. Let's get this quite clear, you know. <laughs> he's the one that looks after me. You know, it's not the other way around. Um, well, he tries to, so. What sort of person do you guys look for to be an employee of Ocean Beach? Because I know that it's a big thing, because they represent you guys, really, don't they? They do indeed, yeah. I mean, obviously they have to have the experience in um, what they've done uh, in, this, in this industry, you know. You, you have to have some, if you're a hostess, you have to have some form of experience or... Um, but everyone's given an interview and they have to pass that with flying colours with, in front of Tony Truman. So, you know, if you can get by Tony, you, you must be able to have a good character and a good... You have to be lively and bubbly. All right, so Wayne, tell me about Ocean Beach. How did the idea for Ocean Beach come about? Um, I was I was actually with Tony, um, and we were we were in a pool somewhere, and um, we were just chatting really, and um, and he he'd found this venue. Um, this used to be two restaurants, um, and they were owned by the same fa Spanish family, yeah. and um, <coughs> and we always said to us each other, you know, it'd be great to put a, a pool a pool party venue together in Ibiza because yeah. there wasn't one. You know, I mean, there, there was Blue Marlin, but that was on the beach, and it's it was a bit different. Yeah. And there yeah. was, um, so we were just chatting one day, and um, and like I say, before he, he called me and uh, said I found a venue, um, but it, we, he'd been after it for three years, and um, and he'd been trying to talk the family into selling it. Cause they never really did a lot of business. It was just one of them. They did yeah. a few weddings and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember. And um, quite chilled out. yeah, very chilled, very chilled. It wasn't. Um, and they, anyway, he said, "Great news! They've agreed. They've agreed to do a deal." And, and we sat down, negotiated, and put the, the original deal we did was just for the first restaurant. Um, and we didn't realise. So I said, "Tony, we need to get next door as well. Find out who owns that, because this is it, it's, it's just not big enough." Yeah. Um, anyway, we found out that the same family owned it, and um, within a week, we'd we'd done a deal on both venues, and. Uh, it was enormous. It, then it was. We thought it's, this is too big. Too big. Because when we, when we, when you cleared it out, when you took everything out, when we actually went through with it and and um, and you know just made it, it was just mud, rest of the soil. Right. You know, apart from this structure here, this is the only structure that stayed. Yeah. And it just looked enormous. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my god, how are we gonna? You know. And now, obviously, it's, it's not big enough. So, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been amazing to see it transform into what it is today, for sure. I remember chatting to you on Instagram. We, we, we follow each other on Instagram, yeah. we chat every now and again. And uh, I think it was, it was last year, I think it must have been about March or April, and you were like, all the beds for the summer sold out already. Yeah, more or less, yeah. You, you pretty much can't get a bed now for the rest of the summer. <laughs> Mad, I mean, this, the today's event, Sin Sundays, I mean, that was released a couple of weeks after we released the other beds. Um, yeah. And that, this sold out in less than half an hour. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of beds in here. Yeah. Half an hour. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's mad, mate. Yeah. So, like, I'm guessing the yeah, tomorrow is no beds, Tuesday's no beds, Wednesday's no, Wednesday you might get a couple of beds, Thursday's sold out, Fridays, right. there's no beds Fridays, yeah. forget it, you yeah. know. Um, Everyone wants to come in, didn't they? Everyone wants to come It seems that way now, yeah. yeah. Thankfully, yeah. And you've had some big stars come through here. Like, I, I remember seeing um, Dan Bilzerian coming through. Yeah, yeah. How was that? Last year. Disappointing. Was it? Yeah, disappointing. Really? Yeah. I thought he was going to get 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 smashed, but he. Uh, was he quite chilled? Yeah, he was. Uh, I mean, it was great to have him in the venue, but yeah. um, but uh, yeah, that was a disappointing one, really. Ed Sheeran. Most lovely, apart from yourself, he's the most loveliest guy I've ever met in my life. Yeah. He was so lovely. Yeah. You know, so I asked him obviously. I, I can have my pick, blah blah. He's like, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got his orange cup in his hand. He went. He went, just let me get the branding in for you. <laughs> really nice guy. Just chatting to me for like half an hour and yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we get some big stars in here now. So, Obviously yeah. the footballers love it as well. When yeah, they, come June, off. come June, it's like a PFA meeting in here. <laughs> They're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So look, 
what makes an ocean beach party just go off? Like, what, what would you say is the, the, the ingredients to like, have a great party? Obviously, music is, 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 is key. Um, we're very conscious of what music's played um, and at what level, you know. I mean, because we're an open air venue, we are restricted uh, to, to, noise level, to noise levels. Yeah. But with the new speaker systems in the world now, we're you know, quite clever, so, you know, they'll they try and not release too much. So we try to play the music as loud as we possibly can without... The good thing is, you can't play it that loud, so people still chat to each other. Yeah. I think the great thing about this place is it's so such a soci sociable place. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, you meet so many people in there. You know, if you've got a bed and you, a heck, group of Engels there and a group of stag guys here, and yeah. you know, and they're all. But yeah. within two hours, everyone's friends with each yeah. other. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, obviously the production side of things. The you know, we do the big shows from the cranes and stuff know, like that. Uh, you know, we've got we've got the cannons coming out yeah. and the noise and the sparklers and you know, it's, we try we try and keep something happening every 10 minutes every 15 minutes something's going on something's yeah. someone to talk about some another reason to take another picture you know and post it on instagram and uh but yeah i mean it's uh we 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 just love people to have a good time and that's that's our priority to make sure they're having that good time you know yeah now i've seen that you know you're very accessible online people can chat to you you always yeah. like you retweet and you, you, you reply to everyone's messages and stuff how many people do you get like kind of just like trying to tap you up or like like oh we're coming in the summer can you sort us out of bed like i'm guessing there's a lot of probably a lot of women as well that just like try and get in there like through the back door <laughs> no i mean i do get a lot of messages and i do answer as many as i possibly can but um gary ever been gary no not his kind of thing <laughs> definitely like not no, no he's not he's not really interested no <laughs> but yeah um how are you how are you and gary like do you, are you guys chatting yeah, yeah, now or yeah, yeah, yeah? Because we've, we've had him on our show, like on, the, on our Kids Breakfast show a couple of times, and he always speaks really highly of you, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, like, we've always been pretty close. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a good, I'm very close with his children. They all come, they all come to Ocean. They, George yeah, yeah. They said if Carlsberg made uncles, <laughs> I'm there. <on> that. <laughs> um, um, you were on Towie for a little bit, weren't you? I was a little while, yeah, just How, for the Marbella that? one. The Marbella session? Right, yeah, yeah, just for like, um, just a few series in uh, Marbella. A few episodes in Marbella. Yeah, yeah. And then I did a couple back home. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I was ne it was never going to be a full time thing for me. Um, I just went on for See, a bit. See, when I saw you on there, I was like, he's, he's done it now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're you're going to be on that forever. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, listen, Wayne, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thanks for having Thank us. You, We've got like a, a, a set of questions that yeah. we ask every single guest, okay, cool. right? Little, little quick fire questions. Yeah. So, what would you say, the first one, uh, what would you say is the biggest misconception about you, about Wayne Lineker? What's the biggest misconception? Um, I guess that I'm flash, you yeah. know. Um, the most commented thing I get is uh, they, people don't really believe I'm as down to earth as what I am, and uh, they're, they're always Which like, you are, like "Yeah, the they say, oh, we can't believe how down to earth you are." And uh, I'm just, yeah, I would say that's the biggest misconception because yeah, so I'm, I'm not flash, you know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not cocky, and I'm not a big head, you know. And uh, I'm just very blessed and very happy, yeah. happy go lucky guy, I guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So who do you reckon we should we should interview in the future on the motto? Anyone? I definitely think you should interview Tony Truman, my partner, because he's an amazing character. He's uh, and he's one of the big reasons this is success. What it is, and uh, and he's got a really good personality. And you, I think you'd have a fun interview with Tony Truman because right. he's uh, he's he, he seems to think he's the new Dan Bilzerian in the Ibiza. <laughs> so I don't know whether you see his Snapchats, but uh, they're very interesting. Yeah, I would say Tony Truman for sure. Lastly, what is your motto? motto. Yeah, like what, is, what what do you live by? Um, I would say live the dream. Do you know what that was? That was my um, live the dream. that was my status on my social media for for years. That's just like mine, yeah. living the dream, living live the dream. Because yeah. you are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Wayne, it's been absolutely brilliant, bro. Nice Thank you so much. much.